that was indeed a popular decision, I think. Uh, I don't think we need to have any kind of interview. I think we'll just sit and let them applaud. Uh, this is the first chat show that you've come on, I yeah. think. Well, um, the first sort of national one. We've done some local ones, yeah. Uh, can you just tell me why you think right now that the Human League have become so successful? Why? Good luck. It's also going to be a particularly short interview, I think, so I only have two, <laughs> only have two questions. Uh, you think it's just luck, do you? Uh, uh, very largely. Just good luck, yeah. It's very, very sort of tempting to say we had a fantastic master plan. You know, we brought out a wonderful record just at Christmas and knew everyone would be sucked in. But it was completely accidental. It surprised me more than everyone else. Ah, oh, self-effacing pop star, which makes, <laughs> as you must understand me, an interesting contrast with myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had hoped to ask you then if you... Uh, <laughs> we did that together. Well, did we? What, the, shall we try on? Two, three... Please, you mustn't, as an audience, you mustn't feel that you have to restrain yourself at any time, you know, applaud any <laughs> small gesture, you know. Um, but I, if, you don't, if you think it's luck, I think you have to admit also that you're part of a, a movement, an overall thing that's happened in, in, in pop music. Please say yes. Yes. <laughs> Please say more than yes. Uh, right. Well, you, you want to know what, why we're sort of successful just uh, at the moment when we would... weren't for years and years? That was a general drift, Phil, yeah. Right. <laughs> We got some really good songwriters in, and before we, uh, we sort of were messing about at it and playing around, and suddenly we got uh, a friend of mine called Ian Burden from Sheffield, and a guy from Joe Callis who used to write all the songs for the Rosillos, yeah. and suddenly we were writing really good songs. Me and my partner Adrian, who'd been at it for years and years, and certainly didn't know how to do the whole lot, got these guys in, like Ian can do the bass for us and Joe's very good on chords and things like that, and suddenly it came together. I think it's good songs, basically. There was a laugh that you'd been at it for those numbers. I think part of the audience... <laughs> this is now we're developing... Phil and I get into the serious part of the conversation, eh? So you just try and follow us along this road. Um, and the, the... What you're referring to is... That <laughs> <laughs> Give us a break, will you? Have <laughs> any idea how hard work this is? Um, because originally the band existed in another form. There was... Oh, come on! <laughs> originally, the I mean, originally, the band existed in another... Form. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> the band existed in another form, ladies and gentlemen, because they had two other members in the band who now went on to form... Heaven, Heaven 17. 17, yeah. And I knew it was Heaven 17, Phil. You don't have to prompt. And I missed the year as well. You know? <laughs> they went on to form Heaven 17, and you drafted in the two yeah. famous young ladies who are now part of the yeah. front line of the Human League. Joanne and Suzanne. Suzanne. Suzanne is accounted for, <laughs> spoken for. Is that correct? Jo Joanne is spoken for. Bad research. Um, Joanne is your young lady. I, I walk out with Joanne, yes. <laughs> Not just yet. <laughs> Phil walks out with Joanne. Suzanne is unaccounted for. Yeah. Um, would you like to tell us how you first... The theory is that you went into a discotheque and you met them. Yeah. Well... The two people that left, there were four people in the group, and two people played synthesizer and wrote music, and they left, which was a bit of a problem. So everyone said, go and get some keyboard players. So naturally, we went out and got some backing singers. Great, though. That's good for you. <laughs> but we needed a keyboard player, and I happened to be in a house with uh, Ian Burden's girlfriend, and I knew he was a very good guitarist. This is so before said, you walked out with... Yes. Right. Oh, yes, yes. That's, that's I just made a few notes here for myself, just for when I get... And uh, seeing as I knew he was a guitarist, I said, how would you like to come and play keyboards for us? And he said, fine, I need a holiday. <laughs> and went to Europe with us. Did it very well. All right, fine, Phil. This is really coming along just fine. Um, I don't think we're all quite straightforward about that one. I had hoped for you to say that you had met them in the Crazy Daisy in Sheffield and it had been an immediate sort of relationship which uh, you felt creatively was necessary for the band. Oh, no, it wasn't immediate. It took about three days. Fine, OK, great. <laughs> I was going to ask you a lot of other things, like whether, like Adam, you felt you had a responsibility towards the uh, younger generation in this country, but I don't think we're ever going to get onto anything like that, so I won't ask you. Um, uh, let's talk about the stage act because you've now the Adrian who worked. Could you do the uh, one, two, three? Oh, sorry. Right. <laughs> now it wasn't worth a round of applause. You in the front. Was, I've just been a bit overzealous, I think. You know, it's because filling out pop stars, you know. I think. 
Um, your stage act is almost like an old, fa you have slideshows, like, I was going to say old fashioned, like groups used to have, Pink Floyd and people like that used to carry. They were different, they were hippies. We're not hippies. Fine, right, okay, well, expand on that for us. Can you just uh, tell us? Well, there the used to be the thing of having sort of a general slide which would convey a mood, which with a Pink Floyd or, or someone like that would be horrid hippiedom. We don't do that. We try to explain the songs. We're anti hippie, actually. Fine. More? No? Okay, fine. No, let's just check, see if um, wrong ones. Um, real dancing, Valentina, those are the Gillian Gregory notes. Um, <laughs> He's never done it before either. Right, okay. So. Um, and you still live in Sheffield? Absolutely, yes. We wouldn't move away from there. Unless right. it was to Whitby, of course. Well, Whitby will be where you have your country house, won't be, a yeah. seaside retreat. Yeah. It's, um, Dracula was actually set in Whitby. Not many people know that. <laughs> well, I certainly, it's certainly a, it's been something I've learned tonight, amongst other things. <laughs> it's a wonderful just, place. It's a very nice place. Great. Well, that's really great. I'm really glad you chose this evening to come along and do your first <laughs> chat show here. And uh, Michael Parkinson will get a cassette of this, so he'll know how to handle it next year. Well, this is the rehearsal. I uh, know, life is not a rehearsal film. Uh, this is the real thing. Thank Phil Oakey. Okay.